Hi everybody, uh, just about to get started on a block and blend demo for this little orange bell pepper here. I'm going to show you guys my palette. We've got a few warm colors and a few cool colors. On the cool color side I have phthalo green, Prussian blue, and raw umber. On the warm color side we have alizarin crimson, cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, and titanium white. The materials we're going to be using, aside from the palette of course, are a large bristle flat brush, a medium bristle flat brush, and a small bristle flat brush, as well as one medium sized soft synthetic filbert. We're also going to be using a little bit of liquid to thin our paint and increase the flow and make it dry a little bit faster. We're going to be wiping our brushes with some baby wipes. We'll probably be using a little bit of solvent as well. Sketch of the pepper on my canvas board. And guys, really only use these canvas boards for studies. They're not good for finished paintings. Um, but because it was such a simple drawing, I decided to just sketch it directly onto the board as opposed to doing a finished tracing paper drawing and then transferring it. If your subject is simple enough and you feel confident enough in your drawing abilities that you can just quickly sketch one out with charcoal and just focusing on line, um, then yeah, by all means, you can skip the tracing paper and transfer paper step. Got my reference pulled up on my phone. Normally I prefer to print these out, but I was not able to uh, print this in color yet today. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Got my palette knife, and I'm going to grab my palette and a little bit of the Prussian blue and the raw umber. And we're going to start mixing up a nice dark blue color to block in that background. Uh, so it's going to be mostly Prussian blue with just a small amount of raw umber. So I have about this much Prussian blue and about this much raw umber. The raw umber is just really going to darken it up a little bit um, and kind of tone down that blue. That blue is a little bit um, intense. And I want to make sure that I'm fo focusing most of my attention on the pepper. So the background color I'm going to allow to be a little bit less intense. However, the blue and the orange are complementary colors, so that blue in the background is going to look great against that pepper, and it's going to help that pepper really pop. Okay, so I've added a little liquid to my mixture, because you have to go thin to thick with um, oil paint. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my large flat brush, and I'm going to start by taking some of the rest of that paint off of my palette knife with that brush and then load up the brush. When you're loading up the brush you want to kind of flip and fold and maintain the, sh the shape of the bristles. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and start blocking in. Now if I were uh, blocking in um, more detailed fabric folds or if the background had more than one shade for this study I would have also mixed a medium shade of this color as well as a lighter shade of this color so that I could block in my darks, my midtones, and my lights at the same time. You always want to go um, darks first, but when you begin blocking in each section, you want to block in first all the darks, then all the midtones, and then all the lights. But since we're just doing a solid color back here, we're just working with that one mixture, okay? Now the first layer, whether you're working in acrylic or oil, goes on a little bit scratchy and thin. It needs to be thin to thick so that later layers don't crack when you're painting. But that said, you will have to do a second coat on this first layer. You can see how kind of washy and translucent this looks. Now if I were to try to make it opaque, I would then make the paint too thick. So don't stress too much about the block-in stage. Um, it's usually a little bit awkward looking for everybody. Okay. And notice how I'm using the chisel edge of the brush to get around the edges of my um, pepper. 
and then just go ahead and spread that out. Try to get that as even as I can. Underneath the apple, that's the next thing that we're going to block in. Oh, sorry, I mean, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start mixing up a nice tan color to go underneath our pepper. That's going to be a little bit of white, a little bit of raw umber, uh, and like a speck of yellow. Um, we'll go ahead and mix those shadow colors too. So this is the ratio of color that I'm going to be working with. I've got a good bit of white very small amount of raw umber and a small amount of the cadmium yellow. I'm hopefully going to get a nice warm neutral color that I can use on the cutting board. Okay, so there's my cutting board color. And to make a couple uh, shadow colors to go on the underside of our pepper and to go um, in the larger shadow that's being cast on the board, I'm going to take a little bit of this aside. I'm going to grab a little bit of raw umber. And I'm going to come over here and grab a little bit of alizarin crimson. And that's about the mixture I'm going to be working with. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and grab a little bit of the Prussian blue as well since that shadow has a little bit of a purpley tint to it. And I'll just mix that up. And it's a flippy folding motion with your palette knife when you're mixing colors. Okay, so I've got two shadow colors that I need to make. One's a good bit darker, that's gonna be this mixture. And I can compare. Yeah, that's about the right value. I'll go ahead and slide that aside and I'm gonna grab a little bit of this cutting board color plus a little bit of my white. Uh, a little bit more of my cad yellow, a little more of the raw umber. And this should be the lighter shadow color of my cutting board. Okay, so for the cutting board I now have my dark, my medium, and my light values in place. Uh, and I'm ready to go ahead and start blocking it in. So um, I'm going to take a moment to wipe out my flat brush and try to get as much of that blue out as I can before switching to this lighter color. Um, I will actually be starting with the shadows first. And guys, I like to try to use the larger brushes for as long as I can in the early stages because it builds up your ability to manipulate the brush and use edges and corners of the brush and not just rely on um, size to make different brush strokes. So my beginners, I do encourage you to please um, work on using the larger brushes. Okay, so I've got a little liquid on this brush and I'm going to pull in a little bit of my shadow color here. And I always want to go dark to light, so I'm going with my darkest color first, and I'm going to fill in this shadow that I've kind of blocked off with charcoal real quick. And I'm going to use the corner of the brush so I have a little bit more precision. Now the paint is a little thin because I did put a little liquid on the brush. Okay, now I've got that area blocked in. I want to go ahead and um, wipe the excess paint from the brush again and then I'm going to switch to that medium shadow color to block in the rest of that shadow before using the palest color to fill in the remainder of the cutting board. Grab a little liquid, grab a little bit of my medium sh shadow color. And we're going to start to just fill that in again using the corner of the brush to get around edges. I can use the chisel edge of the brush to get around the outline of that shadow and then again switch back to the corner. And then I can just use the body of the brush to start to fill it in. Now at this point I'm not super worried about precision. This first layer can be painted over and refined many times over. The objective of this first 
pass of paint, this very first layer of paint, is going to be to establish the color, form, and value of your painting. So don't stress too much about detail in this stage. You're not really going for finesse. You're going for filling in the basics. Remember, we, we uh, talk a lot about uh, working from a very general idea to a very specific idea. So as far as color is concerned, this is the most general idea of color that you're going to have. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and load up the lightest color with a little bit of liquid on my brush, still using that big flat, and I'm going to start to fill in the larger areas. And it's a good idea, if I haven't mentioned it yet, it's a good idea to always work from the background toward the foreground. Oh. Sorry guys. Um, so right now I'm just going to finish filling in this background area. I'm going to start with some alizarin crimson. A little bit of the cad red medium, cad red light, and this should give me a pretty good dark color. Now that's not going to be a large area that has to be painted for that darkest value, so um, I'm not going to make a whole lot of this color. I don't think I need too much. Okay, For my medium color, it's going to be a little bit more red-orange, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my cad red light and a good chunk of my cat orange. It's going to be about half and half for that mixture. And just flip and fold to press the colors together. Okay. And then for my light color, I'm just going to scrape off what's left of the palette knife right next to that. I'm going to grab a little bit more cat orange. And I'm going to grab a big chunk of the cad yellow. Now, yellow is not a very highly pigmented color. So whenever you're mixing a color that involves yellow, start with the yellow first and then add the other colors. Now, obviously, I did the opposite of that. But in this instance, I know that this orange mixture is going to have a lot more pigment and punch to it than the yellow mixture. So I went ahead and grabbed a big chunk of yellow. Uh, so this should give me, actually, you know what? We're going to get a little bit more yellow just to be on the safe side. This should give me a real nice yellow orange. Okay, so I've got a pretty good distinction of dark, medium, and light. I could go a little bit lighter with this orange, actually. Let's grab a chunk of white to throw in there, too, just to lighten her up just a little bit more. Need to see a little bit more variation between those three tones. There we go. That's better. That's a little closer. Okay. So I'm going to start by wiping off the palette knife and then I'm going to grab my medium bristle flat brush and begin blocking in my darkest areas on the palette. Well, the, never load the bristles too far up. You want to stay about halfway between the tip of the brush and the ferula when you load up. The reason for that is if you get all the way to the top, see where it's stained up here, um, it's harder to clean out and the brush is going to lose its shape much more quickly than if you were to just load it about halfway. So be aware of the angle of your hand when you load the brush so you don't load it all the way up to the ferula, which is this metal piece right here. On this pepper. Now I want to go ahead and move to the mid-tone, so I'm going to grab a little bit more of my liquid on the brush, load up my orange with that flippy foldy motion, and start filling in where the mid-tones are. Switch to my lighter value, 
So again, I'm going to load up my brush, that flippy folding motion. Again, grab a little more liquid. Now, with regards to the liquid, you can um, put it directly on the brush and then load up the paint, or you can mix it directly into the pile of paint like we did with our background blue. Um, I like to do a little bit of both. Uh, if I think I'm going to need these colors again, I will um, typically not mix it in right away so that I can um, freeze it and it'll stay wet. If there's liquid in it when you put it in the freezer, it doesn't stay uh, wet quite as long. So I'm just going to go ahead and block in those lighter areas on my pepper. Okay, so now I've got a clean dry filbert. It's a medium soft synthetic filbert. And I'm gonna use this to help me refine the form a little bit. Um, I'm not actually gonna put any paint on it for a little bit. It's just gonna be blending and refining. Now some of the blending took place when we uh, blocked in our basic values, uh, but now I wanna take a chance to start to refine it a little bit. Okay, I've got the uh, orange part of the pepper largely blocked and blended. Uh, so now I wanna come in with a little bit of yellow and white, and I'm just gonna load up both of those colors directly on the brush. Coming a little bit of white and a small amount of yellow. And a tiny bit of liquid on the brush. And I wanna start to get these big fat highlights on the pepper. I want to get a little brighter in the center of those highlights. And I'll probably have to hit this again once this layer of paint has dried. So again, we're just going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of liquid. Now, while I have this brush, I'm going to wipe the excess paint from it, and I'm going to use this small flat to come back and just clean up edges a little bit before I start filling in the stem. Okay, while I have this little flat out, I'm going to go ahead and mix myself a couple shades of green. Uh, I'm not going to need to mix very much at all because it's a tiny little stem. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of phthalo green. I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson to it. And a small amount of my Prussian blue. 
I've got a nice dark shade here. And I'm going to use that to start blocking in this dark shadow towards the top. Then I'm going to wipe the excess paint from the brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of the cad yellow and a little bit of the cad orange and I'm going to use that to make a lighter shade of green. I'm going to use that to get some of the medium dark shadows in there. Then I'm going to wipe that aside and I'm going to grab a much bigger chunk of yellow. Now guys, because I'm mixing teeny tiny mixtures, I have not used the knife for this. But if you feel more comfortable doing so, go right ahead. Adding just a little bit of our cutting board color to get just a little lighter in a few places of my stem. Okay. So that is how you're going to start blocking and blending an oil painting. Um, I'll do another demo of uh, refining this pepper uh, for our next time. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, there will be more demos to come. Thanks for watching. Bye.